doing a great job with 100 watts. It's currently using about one kilo, one kilowatt into a dipole as well, a G5RV with an FTDX 101D. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, if you think you've seen this antenna tuner before, then think again. Although this looks very similar to the cheap knockoffs of the N7 DDC ATU100, this little tuner, the AT100M, has been designed from the ground up and does not use any third party code or open source files. What you will first notice about the AT100M is that it has a high resolution OLED screen, which is utilized in some of its unique features that I'll show you in this video. The AT100M does have an internal battery, which makes it great for field days, POTA, SOTA, and general portable work. And we'll talk more about the battery shortly. Now, as usual, there is a power switch on the front, along with the display and the tune button. Although the tune button acts more like a function button, as the AT100M will automatically tune without any user input. Yep, you can swing your VFO to anywhere between 1.8 MHz and 30 MHz, and if the SWR is off, the AT100M will automatically start tuning as soon as you press your PTT. Now, for this to work best, I'd recommend low power, say between 5 and 10 watts, and then use CW or FM for a constant carrier so the AT100M can find the best match. You can then switch to whichever mode you want to use once the tune has been found. You'll see how quick the tune process is shortly. Now on the rear of the AT100M, we find two SO239 sockets, one to connect your antenna and the other one to your radio. There's also a USB-C type socket, which is used to charge the internal 3300 milliamp hour lithium battery. Now charge time is stated at just four hours with a standby time of between 10 and 25 hours, obviously depending on how often you use the tuner part. Now a big difference between the AT100M and the ATU100 clones is that when the power switch is off, the tuner is actually off. Now I'm not sure if it's just mine, but my older ATU100 clones internal battery used to go flat within a couple of days, even if the power switch was off. With the AT100M, when it's off, it's off. Now power throughput rating is between 0.1 and 100 watts for SSB and CW, but for FM and AM and FD8, keep it below 50 watts. The AT100M does have internal group memories in which the tuner will remember previously used frequencies. This means that future tunes will be even faster, even though a fresh tune is only a couple of seconds, if that. By pressing the tune button, you can cycle through the different modes of operation. For example, one particular screen will show you the SWR and the forward power as a bar graph simultaneously. Another screen is the forward reflected and SWR reported as a figure, as a number, with a nice large and clear readable font. The two other screens, which I've not seen on an ATU like this, is a display over time graph. Now, as you're transmitting, the AT100M can either show a live plotted graph of the SWR or the forward power. The SWR real-time plot graph could be partially useful if you think you have an intermittent antenna or coax issue. As a quick demonstration of using the AT100M, I have it connected in line with my NFED half-wave antenna and my FTDX10. Now my NFED half-wave is tuned for the center of 80 meters, but the band edges of the SWR does creep up. So first I'll swing the VFO to the lower end of 80 meters, set the power output to between five and 10 watts and change the mode to CW. Now, as soon as I key the mic, you can hear the tuner going into automatic tune mode, once the beep stops, it's tuned. Now my NFED half wave only covers from 80 meters to 10 meters with no support for 160 meters and 60 meters, i.e. 1.9 megahertz and 5 megahertz. I performed some tests to see if the AT100M would tune my NFED halfwave on 60 meters first, and to my surprise, it automatically tuned and gave a good SWR reading. Now, I wasn't able to try a QSO as the band seemed pretty emptied at that time of day. As it seemed to work okay on 60 meters, I thought I would try it on 160 meters, and yep, the AT100M tuned perfectly, but again, during the day was not much activity. 
and I'll go back and perform some tests on these bands at another time because the inbuilt tuner on my FTDX10 will not even attempt to tune the NFED half wave on 5 megs or even 1.9 megahertz. So I've never operated on those bands. Maybe with the AT100M, I'll be able to get my first contacts using the NFED half wave. Now, if you power on the AT100M while holding down the tune button, the AT100M will go into a kind of setup menu. Now, from this menu, you can change things like the beep sound on or off, enable or disable manual or automatic tune, the auto tune trip level, and the auto tune stop level. You can also adjust the tuning steps and perform self tests like ADC checking or checking the internal relays. Now, as a special promotion, the official seller of the brand new AT100M will give away an Antuna ATDP adapter board with every AT100M purchase, but you need to make sure you type Tech Mines into the order notes to seller. There's also a limited quantity of only 100 pieces of the AT100M and the adapter board for the moment, so you need to be quick if you want one. Now, I'll leave the specific link in the description of where you can purchase this from. Don't forget to enter Tech Minds to get that dipole center board for free. So the last thing we need to do is take a look inside. Now, the front panel is held on by four screws and so is the back. And then inside, there are four wires you need to disconnect. Now, once disconnected, you can pull the board out of the other end. Now, upon first inspection, it looks really well built. I like the black PCBs. I think they look pretty cool. Now, as we scan over the main PCB, we can see the model number printed along with the manufacturer's website address and tuner.com. Now, in my opinion, it looks really well built and quality components have been used. So there we are, guys, the AT-100M antenna tuner. Now, if any of you guys have got one of these, let me know down in the comments below. Please don't get it confused with the AT100 clone that's kind of flying around everywhere because this is completely different. OK, the only resemblance is it looks similar and it has a similar name. Anyway, if you have one, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know how you guys have got on with it. And don't forget, if you want that purchase link, it's down below in the description. Until the next video, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.